Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's lesson is on the fundamental counting principle. Our objective is to use multiplication to count outcomes and find probabilities. So if you were to make headings for this lesson, that would be fundamental counting principle and find probability. In our real world link, Tyler wants to take a class at a community center. The table shows the class options he is considering. All of the classes are only offered on Monday and Tuesday. According to the table, how many classes is he considering? Well, there's three there. How many days are the classes offered? Two. Complete the tree diagram to find the number of different classes and day outcomes. So far with probability, to find number of outcomes in our sample space, we've had to make tree diagrams or lists or tables. So our classes were drawing, martial arts, and we can conclude that with dance. Our days were Monday and Tuesday. for martial arts and Monday and Tuesday for dance. So to conclude our sample space, you would have martial arts for Tuesday, then dance for Monday, and dance for Tuesday. Find the product of the two numbers you found in exercise 1 and 2. Well, that would be 3 times 2, and that is equal to 6. How does the number of outcomes compare to the, new, the product? Well, the number of outcomes in our sample space, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, they are the same. So what did we do? We multiplied the number of possibilities here for classes by the number of possibilities for days, 3 times 2 to get 6, and that matched the number of outcomes, 6, after I made my tree diagram. Hmm. Well, today's lesson is on using multiplication to count on outcomes and find probability. And so we have the fundamental counting principle. If event M has M possible outcomes, and event N has N possible outcomes, then event M followed by event N has M times N possible outcomes. You can use multiplication instead of making a tree diagram to find the number of possible outcomes in a sample space. This is called the fundamental counting principle. It's every student's best day in probability. Instead of making tree diagrams, instead of making tables to list all of the possible outcomes, we can now use multiplication instead. So our guided example one, find the total number of outcomes when a coin is tossed and a number cube is rolled. Well, a coin has two possible outcomes. And so you can see where we have the coin has two, a number cube has six, and according to the fundamental counting principle, we can multiply two times six to get a total of 12 possible outcomes. And our check step could be making a tree diagram. When I flip the coin, I have those two outcomes of heads and tails. The number cube, I have six, so I could go heads one, heads two, heads three, and so on. And this lists our 12 different outcomes. So whether we use a tree diagram or the fundamental counting principle, we get a total of 12 outcomes for tossing a coin and rolling a number cube. And now we can work on our got it. Find the total number of outcomes when choosing from bike helmets that come in three colors and 
two styles. Well, we have both colors and styles. And what we're going to do is multiply the number of colors by the number of styles to get our total. Well, our number of colors, three. Our number of styles was two. And so if I multiply three times two, I get six. So I have six outcomes that are possible. When it comes to finding probability now, you can use the fundamental counting principle to help find the probability of events. In our first guided example, find the total number of outcomes from rolling a number cube with sides labeled 1 through 6 and choosing a letter from the word numbers. Then find the probability of rolling a 6 and choosing an M. Well, the number cube, we're still going to use the fundamental counting principle to calculate the number of total outcomes first. So our number cube has six outcomes. Our letters, there's seven letters and numbers. So six times seven gets us 42 different outcomes. Now, when it comes to probability, remember, we're looking for the favorable over the total. We're looking for what we're looking for over the total number of outcomes. When you think about it, there's only one favorable outcome here because there's only one out of those 42 of getting a 6 with an M. And so that is 1 42nd or about 2%. There is another way of doing this that I wanted to show as well. What would you say the probability of rolling a 6 on the number cube is? Well, that's just 1 out of six. What's the probability of getting a M in the letter or in the word numbers? Well, that's one out of seven. So what you could also do here is multiply one-sixth by one-seventh to get one-forty-second. That's another way of using the fundamental counting principle to help us calculate probability. In our third guided example, find the number of different genes available at the gene shop. Then find the probability of sel randomly selecting a size 32 by 34 slim fit. Is it likely or unlikely that the genes would be chosen? Well, how many different sizes do we have? Five, lengths, three, styles, three. So five times three times three gets us a 45 possible different outcomes. There are 45 different types of genes to choose. Now, out of the 45 possible outcomes, only one is favorable. So the probability of randomly selecting a 32 by 34 slim fit is 1 45th or 2%, and that's very unlikely. And again, I, I do want to show you the other way of calculating this. If you're looking for the waist size of 32, there is a 1 out of 5 chance of choosing that. For the length, if you're looking for a 34, there's only a 1 out of 3 chance of choosing that. And for our slim fit, there's still only a 1 out of 3 fit. And so if you multiplied those three fractions together, you would also, again, get 1 45th. So it's just another way of calculating probability. Thank goodness they didn't have skinny jeans on there. Anyways, two number cubes are rolled. What is the probability that the sum of the numbers on the cube is 12? How likely is it that the sum would be 12? Well, using the book method first, we have the first number cube, and we have the second number cube. How many outcomes are there on the first? Six. How many outcomes are there in the second? Six. So six times six equals 36. And now when you think about this, how many different ways can you roll a number 12 on the number cube? 
Well, you have the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 on the second. How many different ways could you form a sum of 12? Well, there's only one way. There's only 6 plus 6 to get to 12. There's no other way to do this. So this would be a 1 out of 36 chance, which if you were to simplify this is about 3%, which is very unlikely. Very unlikely. And in our last guided example for the lesson, a box of toy cars contains blue, orange, yellow, red, and black cars. A separate box contains a male and female action figure. What is the probability of randomly choosing an orange car and a female action figure? Is it likely or unlikely? First, find the num total number of possible outcomes. There are five choices for the car, two choices for the action figure, so five times two is ten. There is one way to choose an orange car and a female action figure, so it's very unlikely, and it's one out of ten. And once again, if we were to take this apart, if we just look at the cars, there's a one out of five chance of choosing an orange car. And there's a one out of two chance of choosing a female action figure. And so if we were to multiply these together, you would again get one-tenth. So just one more way of calculating probability here. And that is it for this lesson on the fundamental counting principle. I hope that you find it easier than making tree diagrams and tables to find outcomes and calculate probability. Good luck.